Every time I come out here and set up my laptop to do an outside video, the, the construction noises start. I come out here, it's completely quiet, and then that starts. So this time I'm just going to plow through. I want to talk quickly about a book that I just recently reread, a uh, movie tie-in, TV tie-in. I was watching, let's see the name of the channel, Outlaw Bookseller has a great post on the work of Thomas M. Dish. And uh, I watched that for fun. I'm a, a big fan of Dish going way back. I read most of his S major SF novels, and I read his horror novels that came out in the 80s. And there was another book on there that they talked about in that video, which I'll link to, which was a novelization he did about the prisoner from the prisoner TV series, which I also really liked. Hadn't thought about it in years. I thought I'd check it out and see if there were e-copies available. The library did have an e-copy. Here's the copy I used to own. Can you see that? Oh my god. I don't even know which way to move it. Well, probably turn my phone on first, right? Alright, so this is a British import that for a long time was the only copy you could get in the U.S. back when I bought it when I was a young man. Bought it at Dark Carnival Books in Berkeley, California. I took the BART over to buy it. I called ahead to make sure they had it. And uh, a couple people were in there talking and somebody said, could that be good? And the woman working behind the counter said, yeah, actually, this is really good. And she was right. It's a very well-written novel. I don't know if it's even accurate to call it a novelization because it's not based. It's an original story uh, based on the Prisoner TV series, which I don't know if people remember or not. was this wonderful TV series from the 60s, high-concept sci-fi series about with Patrick McGuin playing a character who's abducted to this place called The Village. And he's given a number instead of a name, and he has to find his way out, and nobody's, and there's not a lot of answers for him, and nobody knows, he's not sure why he was taken there, and he's not sure who runs the village, he's not sure where the village is. Uh, it's only 17 episodes, I think you should check it out. I'm probably gonna have to watch it again. I've watched it dozens of times. I guess it's my, favorite series and what I liked about the book is well first of all Thomas Dish was consulted on the series there was a there's been a few interviews over the years where they've talked about coming up with ideas for the series and one of the things they did was haul in or invite in a bunch of science fiction writers living in, in the London area and kind of use them as kind of a bullpen to brainstorm ideas. Thomas Dish was one of those people. He's an American, but he was living in London at the time with another American, John Sladek, who's another great science fiction writer of the era who, I believe he's American, I think he's American, too, who they co-wrote some books together, and they were part of that circle of New Worlds books uh, around Michael Moorcock and those folks, you know, the, the New Wave, which is probably my favorite era going back in SF it's definitely the one that got me into reading adult SF anyway out of that session um, you know the series was made Thomas Dish did not get credited or write on any actual episodes of the series but he was involved at that level and then there were three books published three novels published around that time. I believe that edition that I showed before is the same cover that would have come out in 1968. There was two other books. I eventually read them as well. One's by, I want to say Hank Stein, another one I don't remember the author. Those books were very forgettable, but this prisoner novel is really well done. It's, it's as good, nearly as good as Dish's other work, he really takes it and makes it his own. Uh, reading it the first time, or reading it this time, I was reminded of reading it the first time and thinking it was like a reinterpretation uh, from the from the entrance because of the way that the prisoner number six, we don't, we're never given his real name, or almost never given his real name, certainly not in this book, is abducted to the village in a different way 
than he is in the series and that even, even if you don't watch the series or haven't seen it you can probably find the opening sequence on YouTube someplace which is a really uh, great opening sequence like a little little mini film of how he gets abducted there as you know with no dialogue or anything and the great soundtrack it's kind of fun to watch that um, anyway he gets abducted in a different manner not from his house he's on a train going somewhere wakes up not where he expects to be, but in the village. The village is a place with no name, and everyone there's got a badge on with their number, and it seems to be run by a person named Number Two, which sort of begs, which sort of raises the question, who's Number One? I won't spoil much more of the series or the book, but. There's, it's, it's not really an action novel. There's, there's, there's episodes of the series that are very action-oriented, like chasing and fighting and escapes and stuff. There are others that are uh, more cerebral. This, this sort of goes in that area. There's some discussion between the different uh, inmates of the village, what the numbers mean, and do their numbers mean anything to each other. And like, I'm number seven. Is that somehow connected to number six? And... I'm 22 and things like that that it's kind of an intellectual pursuit going on of people trying to figure out their place in this in this system and the overall plot is uh, regarding whether our character number six would make a good number two and about halfway through it realized that this does take place in the same world as the series because some of the episodes are referenced and they're referenced in a way that uh, maybe puts them in a different light than in the series so I guess you wouldn't say this is canon or if you care about stuff like that um, he may have been to the village before he may have to go back again he may be able to escape for a while but not forever or this may be all mind games that are being played with him and there's evidence that uh, they consider some of the uh, other adventures he'd been through is just for his amusement I think they're discussed as and there's a long sequence where they put on a play they put on a, a production of Measure for Measure Shakespeare's Measure for Measure which I enjoyed a lot it really does recall some of the <laughs> some of the schemes and stuff that they would get into in, in the series, like, you know, when they'd have an art show and number six would use the excuse of the art show, uh, you know, to make a piece of art that he could, you know, then sort of work his way into an escape plan. So there's this kind of this double bind of, like, he's trying to escape the village, but he's also trying to integrate into the village and make it work for him. So I don't know if this makes sense if you haven't, seen the series uh, I hope it makes you interested enough to at least check out the opening sequence and see if it's something you'd like to see it's a British series Patrick McGowan is a follow-up to a series he did called Secret Agent or Danger Man depending on what country you lived in which ran for several seasons and he wouldn't do it anymore so they they invented this they came up with a science fiction uh, series instead about a character who may be the same character or or is probably not the same character that he played in Secret Agent slash Danger Man, a character named Drake, and put him through some sort of more philosophical situations where, about the nature of identity and, and the nature of uh, privacy and, and different things we were, uh, were very concerned about then and still. And, and it's just a fun puzzle. It's not like series today where it's all planned out in advance there is a story arc that you can find there but there's also because of the year it was written in there's also a lot of inconsistencies if you watch old television you know that there wasn't this this um this fetish for canon and these kind of things that people do now that people demand of their stories now where captain kirk has their or the new captains of the Enterprise have to have the exact same protocols and everything, each issue, and 
in the late 60s era of television, the story was king. The, the needs of a particular story were the most important thing. And if canon had to be fudged or if things were inconsistent with other episodes, it was not as important because, number one, you couldn't see these things a thousand times. You certainly couldn't see them any time you wanted. You had just had to watch them, and if you missed them, you had to wait for the summer or the syndication. And I'll stop there before I get into a long rant about television on my BookTube channel. But let me know in the comments if, if you found this interesting, if you'd heard of this novel, if you like novelizations at all. I think it's a real curiosity because it's so well written and it was so taken so seriously by Tom Dish. And uh, like I say, I, I, if you want to know more about Dish, there's a great uh, booktuber on that, a great booktube on that by Outlaw Bookseller. Really good, covers different phases of Dish's career, a very interesting long career that included poetry and uh, he was a theater critic for The Nation, which is a, a weekly uh, political magazine in the U.S. I got to see one of uh, one act play that he had written, even when I lived in New York many years ago, and plus all his science fiction novels, and and his horror novels like The Businessman, uh, The M.D. There's one other I think. The Businessman's really good. The M.D.'s really good. Those are more accessible to people who don't even like SF. There's horror novels. Everything he writes is extremely well written. So if anybody's heard of this book or have ever thought about reading it, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And also, if you can, if you want to subscribe, I would appreciate that too. You can always hit the subscribe button, then, un then undo the notification thing so that you don't get notifications. And that's how I do it with a lot of, a lot of people I follow because I like to come to YouTube and I like to start scrolling through my subscriptions and, and see what's up rather than getting a lot of notifications. So whatever works best for you. Other, anyway, uh, that's it for today. I've got other ideas of things to do soon um, and I'll be seeing you then. Oh, I did, that was a pun. I didn't even realize it. Be seeing you is what they say in the village. I did not do that on purpose. Be seeing you.